All right, hey, we're back and uh, with a video about a new kind of morality. So Durkheim, remember for him, morality is super important. We need to be regulated and able to have fulfilling lives. Um, and Durkheim says, look, we solved the problem of dynamic density with the division of labor, but the sacrifice, the problem that that creates is we don't have a, uh, a basis for a common morality anymore, or at least it's weaker than what we probably ideally need because all of our different experiences are leading us to have a, from a strong collective consciousness to a weak collective consciousness. August Comte says, so this is not, this is not good. We don't have really a collective consciousness anymore. Durkheim says, look, we've got to be realistic if we want to fix things. We have to understand what's really going on. We can't just say, well, it's, like the division of labor has changed and so suddenly we don't have a basis for um, for solidarity anymore. We've got to be able to uh, look at what we've really got. So what he says is the division of labor doesn't remove our ability to be connected to each other. It just changes it. And it changes it in, for Durkheim, a way that is potentially positive. Now, Karl Marx is going to flip out about three quarters of the way through this lecture because what Durkheim is going to say is going to is going to be something that is obviously flawed. But Durkheim's not an idiot. He understands what the problem is. So first, Durkheim is going to talk in sort of ideal terms. He says, OK, so look, we have all of these people who now are living these different lives and yeah, that's not great for our common morality. But what does it give us? It changes something because we're still kind of together, right? And here is where he comes up with his two ways of thinking about solidarity, connectedness. Remember, um, one of his big issues is your attachment to society. That's part of morality. Um, he uses the term often integration. So how we are integrated. In a primitive society, with a strong collective consciousness, we are integrated into society by sharing the same experiences and same beliefs as everybody else. Now, why he calls it mechanical solidarity, I don't fully understand. The argument that I've heard is that it has to do with all of us are like kind of mechanically moving the same way. I don't love it, but it doesn't kind of matter what I love because he was Durkheim and he got to call things whatever he wanted to. He called it mechanical solidarity. Remember that mechanical solidarity goes with primitive, uh, with primitive societies, with strong collective consciousness. We all think the same way. Therefore, we are all connected and integrated into uh, the same society. In uh, modern societies with a weaker collective consciousness, he said, so we don't share the same experiences. We don't share the same beliefs. What binds us together? Well, it's the fact that I need you and you need me. I can't raise my own food. I can't fix a car. I can't build or fix anything in my house. All that I can do is one thing, which is teach. And that's what I have to offer. I am completely dependent on other people for everything else in my life. Um, luckily, as of right now, we still care about sociology enough that this skill that I have is valuable. So I'm able to get paid for it. But if I don't have that, I can't take care of myself. I can offer one thing, but so can a lot of other people doesn't, generally speaking, raise his or her own food. A lawyer doesn't do that. Um, most people do one thing. We specialize. And as a result, I contribute my one thing and then other people take care of me in other ways. And the same thing is happening for all of us. He calls this kind of connection, this interdependence based on specialization. He calls that organic solidarity. Again, it's not a super intuitive term. You're going to just sort of have to figure out a way of remembering it. He says that we all function kind of like an organism. I play my part just like the 
heart. I was like, I'm not the heart, but like I am the heart. And a doctor plays her part like she's the lungs, and a lawyer plays his part like he's the liver, and the farmer pay, plays her or his part like, you know what I mean? So we're like an organism. We all do our own little thing, and it keeps us all together. And the reason I'm integrated into this, my basis for integration is my, is my dependence on these other people. All of us depend on each other. We are interdependent, and that is what allows us to be integrated. Okay, so what the, the insight that Durkheim has here, and this is where Marx is going to flip. So just give him a second. Have a little faith because he is Emil Durkheim. He says that, let me scroll down. He says that this awareness of the fact that we depend on each other, okay, that awareness is the source of our common morality. He says, and this is a quote, the economic services um, that we render are insignificant, the economic part is insignificant compared with the moral effect that our interdependence produces. Um, the fact that I depend on a farmer and I depend on a doctor and I depend on a house builder and a car mechanic, my awareness of that is what is the basis of our common morality. We all know that we don't survive without each other. And for that reason, I am willing to kind of, uh, I'm willing to uh, repress my passions and do the right thing according to our society. Now, I know what you're thinking right now, or at least I know what Marx is thinking. He's thinking, or if you ask anybody who's ever waited tables, how appreciated do you think people, uh, how appreciative are people of the services that you provide? Do they feel a sense of connection to you and acknowledge the fact that thank God for you and your waiting on our table because we depend on each other and I feel like I my sense of morality has been rejuvenated by eating at this restaurant and that's why I'm treating you my waiter or waitress so well. No, obviously that's wrong. Marx says and if you if you're thinking about Marx what you're if you're remembering what Marx had to say about social relations under capitalism, he said, he described this as the fetishism of commodities. When we exchange a product or a service, it, it hides the fact that we are actually cooperating. We are so focused on that exchange that we don't think about what those people are doing for us. Marx would say, Durkheim, you're insane. This is not a sense of common morality. This is where we forget all of our morality and treat other people like dirt. And if you've ever waited tables, I'm sure you've had that experience. Um, okay, valid criticism. Durkheim, if you remember back five minutes ago, I said Durkheim is talking about the ideal here. He says that, hold on one second. He says that, uh, that this is what happens ideally, that we acknowledge the fact that we depend on each other. And that is the, and, and that humility that that engenders creates this sense of common morality. That is the one common experience we have. We all depend on each other, but he acknowledges in reality, this might not happen. That's how the division of labor is supposed, that's the effect it's supposed to have, but it could be that there are pathological forms that the division of labor is going to take, not this normal form to him that would be um, that would create this common sense of morality. So in the next video, we're going to look at what does he mean by pathological forms of division of labor, and you will immediately recognize that that's exactly what we live under. All right, I'll see you in that one.